Hello and welcome you to our podcast, where biology gets interesting. My name is Emma and I'm Naomi. And today we have the first episode of a special series yes. here for you. In this series, we're talking about corals, yeah. all around corals. And today mm -hmm. we're talking about the biology. It's very cool. I'm very excited about it. Yes. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I when I was a kid, I always ca I kind of thought because corals aren't moving, that they are stones or like minerals or such kind of things. What mm -hmm. about you? Did you also? I I always thought they were like a plant, and then then like when I learned like the coral jewelry was made out of animals. I was like freaked out, so it's mm, it was news for me too. But as we said, uh, corals aren't minerals; they aren't plants. Even if like looked at them like from close distance, they look kind of like flowers. Mm -hmm. They're actually animals, and it's not like one coral is one animal. It's actually like one coral is like a colony of polyps, which are like. Very uh, thousands of small um, uh, Individual. animals, yes. individuals, yes, that live in like together. together yes, mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. Like these polyps are like very small, one to three millimeters, um, usually. And um, yes, they're also very reactive, as we saw it now. In we have a aquarium in mm -hmm. the school, and when you touch them or even when just a stronger flow of water comes yes. to them they're like going back in yes, the retracting yes yeah. exactly so mm -hmm. you wanna tell yes. them a little bit more about the anatomy yes of course but let's start first like the um, corals are from our antozoa uh, same family as jellyfishes and mm -hmm. animals They're marine invertebrates and they're non-moving animals. So like they can like, these individuals can make some small movements, but they can't like walk around on the ocean floor. So, um, a polyp. You should think of them kind of like a plastic bag. It has an opening and like a cavity inside. But on top... These polyps don't have like this flat thing, but they have tentacles, mm -hmm. like six, eight, uh, it depends on the species. And um, on the inside of this bag, they have like the oral cavity, uh, which is kind of like a stomach, uh, where they can like digest nutrients and so on. And they have a mouth that can open and close and on top these tentacles. And um, they also have only two layers of cells. An external layer, which is called ectoderm, and an internal layer, like on the mouth opening, which is called endoderm. And it's made of like stomach layers. But mm -hmm. we're not going to get too much into details about this. Um... Talking about that these are these individuals are mm -hmm. living like in this colony all together it looks like it's one uh, animal as you mentioned mm -hmm. how does this work that they're like disconnected and are they connected also like really mm -hmm. connected Th they are connected i was actually it, this was actually my next point and um this external layer of so and the internal layer aren't attached to each other. In the middle, you have a kind of like jelly substance, which is called mesoglea. And in this um, jelly substance, there are a lot of things, proteins, nutrients, cells, and, uh, and so on. But the external layer like continues on the whole surface of the coral mm -hmm. and it connects all the polyps. Like they actually share cells, like a polyp shares cells with the polyps nearby and this connected mesoglea um, enables them to actually exchange nutrients 
when maybe one side of the coral gets more like sunlight, they have more energy, which can go and which and then this energy and these nutrients can go like the sugars mm-hmm, and can wander to the other, the other polyps. Yes. Exactly. So it's like uh, it's kind of like the blood, blood, the red blood cells in our yes, bodies. Yes, uh, right? and They're... exactly because these nutrients can't move by themselves. And there are these uh, moving cells which transport yes. um, mm-hmm. the nutrients between one another. And going back to the anatomy and how uh, a coral work, works, um, I'm going to talk now about the two um, kinds of corals. Yes, exactly. You know? the, the soft corals and the hard corals. Exactly. Where are the differences? And... Do the, do they both have this jellyish um mm-hmm. substance? Because I have when I think of the soft corals, it's like obvious. Also, I can imagine that there is like this jelly substance. Mm-hmm. But when I have all of these hard corals in mind, obviously, as the name says, it says it by itself. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Do they also have the same principle? So then maybe I'm just gonna start by the soft corals. Mm-hmm. Um, they have polyps, uh, they are interconnected between them, uh, and just like they're almost all built out of this matrix of mesoglea and like cells. But the mesoglea is a little different, it has like cavities in them, um, where like and these cavities they're like our bloodstream system almost, like uh, with uh. Small tubes, almost, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, this connects, like, the gastrovascular cavities, like the holes in the bags <laughs> <laughs> between them. And this, like, interconnects the polyps for the exchange of nutrients and so on. And, um, yes, there are various species of, of uh, soft corals. They're mostly non-reef builders. But this you're gonna, we're going to talk about more about it later. And um, the hard corals, um, maybe another thing, the soft corals have are built with an eight-side symmetry. They have eight tentacles, which are like kind of like leaves. They're flat. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, the um, tentacles of the hard corals uh, are not leaf-shaped. They look more like cylinders with like a round top. Okay. And um, and have they also like this uh, eight symmetrical? Or? No, they have a six side symmetry, so only six um, six tentacles. Tentacles, exactly. But if you look from very close distance, this um, polyps looks like a flower. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. I love to observe the corals in our aquarium. It's fascinating. Yes, sadly, all our, our hard corals died. Mm-hmm. But we have a very good chance to um, observe the soft corals and new hard corals should be yes, coming in soon. They should be... Coming this week, I think yes. so. They might already excited. be there. <laughs> Me too. And going back to the hard corals, um, they also have this <laughs> this layer of mesoglea, but underneath of it, there is there are the corallite. So they build themselves an actual skeleton and this works because they get dissolved minerals from the water they mix them into their um, gastrovascular opening with proteins and with some muscles that they that the polyps have in them they rise up and in the space that it's left they deposit um calcium carbonate mm-hmm. also called like limestone and they build Firstly, um, um, coralite, which look which looks kind of like a cup in which the um, polyps can retract, and underneath of it a whole skeleton, which is actually the reef. Yes. At the end, uh, they're also called uh, reef building. Reef builders, exactly. Reef builders, yes. And this is so interesting. Hard coral corals grow very slowly. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. And they built like this kind of rocky material which is left behind them. I think they're all, in one year they're only growing like a few millimeters. millimeters yes. yes. It's, so it's very hard for the coral reefs to regenerate. That's very um very important if you th we think maybe about coral bleaching or so on, but you're going to talk more about it yes, next exactly. week, right? In the next episode. Perfect. Uh, yes. Um, so I once saw a very beautiful picture from a coral which expelled egg cells. And it was very surprising because I kind of didn't have this picture in mind that they're um, reproducting with egg cells and sperma. But mm -hmm. you wanna you wanna explain this a little bit closer? Yes. Uh, how this works? So the reproduction is also very interesting. So we said this word so many times, but this animal is just mind blowing. Mind blowing. Yeah. They are so cool. I mean, so going back to it, of course, corals can just walk around and reproduct between yes, themselves to to another end. Yes. <laughs> So they reproduct in two ways, the sexual and non-sexual way. Asexual. Asexual way, of course. So the sexual way, the, it's the one you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And this happens uh, through mass spawning on a very specific night. Um, the different coral colonies expel all together the uh, cell and sperm cells the eggs and the sperm and this then rise up on the surface mm -hmm. and this timing is very important because they have that's to true. meet yes that's timing and it's so fascinating because it's not only they are perfectly coordinated yes this coordination is mm -hmm. and it happens also not not only between the same species they of course can't um fertilize them uh, another species but m many different species uh, spawn on the same night mm -hmm. and then going back to it they meet on the surface of the water the egg gets fertilized and this then um, generates a planulae which is a larvae mm -hmm. and it's like the baby polyp like the embryo of mm -hmm. a polyp And this then can't just keep floating in the water, no. and it like goes back to the to the ground to the ground yes. and searches for a rocky surface like mineral where it can attach itself mm -hmm. and then grow. I saw another picture. Okay. Uh, which wasn't as it was funny. This rocky surface doesn't have as has to be a rock. It also can be like a crab. Uh, a crab? Yes, this picture pictured a crab mm -hmm. with a coral on its back. And then it looked like uh, another leg or like antenna, and it was just very hilarious. <laughs> yes, that's cool. They're so cool. Yes, and it, it's, not, it's not like they're um, doing a symbiosis or so, but they're living on each other, so mm -hmm. it's fascinating very but when the larvae attaches itself on the rock surface it then generates a polyp mm -hmm. but at this point it's just one polyp yes exactly and how is it going to grow to this big big colony yes now the question. Uh, and at, it's at this point that the ex asexual uh, uh, way of reproducing enters the picture and you can just um, think about it As it's like, um, it's a division. Mm -hmm. These um, polyps like divide and it grows like a miniature polyp, which then slowly grows apart from the um, original polyp. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe think about it if you know, like when we cut ourselves or something, our body has to regenerate or like when we're growing. So our cells like, divide into two identical cells and only that this is happening with two individuals mm. and this is so interesting because at the end 
they have the same DNA. Mm -hmm. So a coral is a lot of different animals, but they all they're all clones yes. basically. They all identical. They're the identical. They share all share the same DNA, and this also explains why they can share cells mm -hmm. with the mesoglea and like the the this. Yes, this interconnection. Otherwise, this couldn't be possible. No, exactly. Like, with a, an organ transplant, we have to take anti-rejection meds because the, the, the DNA is different. And this can only happen if they have the same DNA. And I find this so fascinating. Mm. It's very cool. So, moving you, on. You, you, talked, you told uh, us about this mouse. So they're eating like other animals, or how how mm -hmm. can we imagine this? Yes, once again, corals are surprising and strange. So um, they eat. They have on the top of their tentacles some poisonous cells, which have like a sensor. And when like a very small fish or a, a plankton comes by and activates this sensor, like a needle comes out and stings these organisms and they get like instantly paralyzed or killed mm -hmm. and then the tentacles like push the organism into the mouth opening that closes and can then digest the organism and absorb the nutrients and then the rest like the mouth opens again because it only has one cavity and the rest gets expelled and the cycle can start all over again but uh, as when, when i have a when i have a coral reef in mind i have like this beautiful clear waters and this, with a lot of big fishes uh, yeah and also not that much that's true it's it's kind of like it looks so empty mm -hmm. and i wonder do they have enough uh, food with this method no, they don't. With this method, they only reach like 10% of their nutrient intake. They have to like, and now you may be wondering where does the other 90% come from? And this comes from a symbiotic um, interaction, interaction yes. between the corals and the zooxanthellae, which, which are algae. Exactly. That uh, in this interaction are able to give the corals the nutrients which exchange other things mm -hmm. in return. And these algae also give the corals these wonderful and very diverse colors. That's true, because also by plants, we have plants that are red, uh, uh, green and so on. And this is just the kind of like... The difference. The difference of how they're built and so on. But I don't want to spoil anything about this. It's going to talk Naomi in the, in next, the next episode, episode, which is going to be just as interesting, maybe even more. 